What's up guys, welcome to Voldora Kuhn. From our previous episode, we have witnessed the real identity of the last member of Seven Celestials in Ramuru's resolution. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, I will put the link in the description below. Just a quick warning, these videos contain spoilers from the light novel. I also want to share to you my YouTube membership, Voldora's Loyal Knights. For more details, just click the join button below. Also, don't forget to join our Discord community, Voldora Kuhn Subordinates. The link is in the description below. See you there. So now in this video we will review what happened next, which is the private conversation between Damrata and Granbel. But before we will proceed, please like, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now without further ado, let's proceed with the video. Sitting on chairs opposite each other, Damrata and Granbel exchanged these lines. Damrata said, You are quite a spiteful man, Granbel Sama. You almost got me killed out there. And Granbel responds, Don't be absurd. Didn't you already flee before getting affected at all? Damrata asked back, I had no choice. Have you not received the report from my subordinate? Granbel said, More or less, yes. And Damrata interrupted, that demon was more of a monster than I ever imagined. It won't matter even if the Empire sends out their regular army. We would need the most powerful army which is the Imperial Guard to defeat him. And they both continued to exchange information. In Damrata's eyes, the plan had failed. So he decided to distance himself from the Rosso family until the heat died down a little. Negotiation could have been more favorable for him had the plan been a success. Yet now that it had failed, the Rosso may deliberately use this as an excuse to place obstacles before him. That's why right now he simply wanted to cut his losses and move on. But things had changed. When Damrata was on his way to Tempest Federation, someone reported to him through magic communication, Hinata was defeated. She and Demon Lord Ramuru have agreed to terms. He had already seen this coming, but it was the worst possible outcome imaginable. Hinata was still alive, and the Western nations were still under the influence of the Western Saints Church. It would make it harder to do business there. If she had made peace with Ramuru, it was unlikely anyone could trigger that demon lord once again to eliminate her. Damrata and Granbel only joined forces on this scheme because their goals were aligned, yet at that moment he could conclude that the plan had completely failed. Although depending from another perspective, it may be beneficial. Even when it failed, it didn't cause any loss to Damrata. While he may have lost a venue for business in the Western nations, there were still other channels for making profits. Cerberus was a huge underground organization and had several trade unions as its cover. Furthermore, Damrata had no personal interest in whether Hinata lived or died. That's why he wasn't that angry at Granbel's miscalculation. His goal here, in fact, was to exploit the outcome to secure a favorable position for himself in future negotiations. Damrata changed his plan on the spot and decided to drop by to greet Granbel after coming to that conclusion. Damrata tried to avoid responsibility and shifting the blame upon Granbel's group by saying that Granbel Sama's plan did sound a lot better in theory. He said that Granbel were all bark and no bite because not only did he fail to eliminate Hinata, but even allowed her to build a friendly relationship with Demon Lord Ramuru. Granbel responds, yes, I must admit to that. This upset in the balance of power can't be reversed at this point in time. The great historic kingdom of Pharmus will eventually fall, and a new kingdom will be built on its ruins. It is exactly what Demon Lord Ramuru wanted, and it means your project is a goner. Damrata is silent and seemed to agree with Granbel's view. What do you plan to do next then? And Granbel asked back, in regard to what exactly? And Damrata explains, Demon Lord Ramuru's goal seems to be to turn the Jura Great Forest into a financial center of the world. It is something that us Rosso will not permit. In the end, they both agreed to continue their friendly relationship with each other since there's no point in blaming each other. And they simply don't have the strength to make a blatant move against Demon Lord Ramuru or Hinata the Saint. Then they will unite to prevent the emergence of a new trade block on the land of Jura Tempest. Granbel was trying to safeguard the power he wielded in the Western nations. Granbel's trump card, Maria Bell, 
had foreseen the birth of a new trade bloc centered around the Jura Great Forest. If left undealt, the influence of the Rosso would no doubt be diminished. He wouldn't allow such a flaw after spending thousands of years building it up. He now plans to crush this flaw by interfering with demon lord Remuru. Since now he's no longer part of seven celestial sages, he would require the aid of the organization Damrata's party belonged to Cerberus. The five elders from Granbell's family also sent their support. There were some other aces that the Rosso have hidden, but it was still too early to show their hand yet. Granbell thought it's better to take advantage of Cerberus instead. However, Damrata didn't intend to follow through with Granbell's proposal, well, hold on just one second. Damrata thinks that the Rosso and Five Elders were amazing business partners, but he can't see them leading him. They were gravely mistaken if they thought that Damrata would listen to everything they said. Damrata was a businessman after all. He got paid to do things, and his thoughts were ever-changing. Damrata said, I truly desire to maintain friendly relations with you and your family. But I can't help to say that I cannot readily agree to your suggestion. After all, we have no reason to antagonize demon lord Ramuru. Granbell exclaims, how dare you, and Damrata laughed, haha, this is but my respectful response to your proposal. Hinata had already found me to be suspicious, so it won't be that simple to continue our activities in the western nations. Instead, I will return home and provide you with someone else. Damrata added and left Granbell with these words, we'll continue the part of our business in trade as usual. But let us just pretend like all of this never happened. Damrata stood up while Granbell had misread him, yet could no longer argue back anymore. The organization known as Cerberus was way too powerful in the underworld of the Eastern Empire. Angering any one of its leaders, such as Damrata, would lead to a splinter in their relationship. And it would be much of a loss for the Rossos to bear. Granbell said to Damrata, very well. We will handle it ourselves. Just don't hold us back. And Damrata answers before departing, that's for certain. Do put your trust in us considering our relation so far, he gave a polite bow and left. Damrata is an honest and sincere merchant. But if only Hinata was successfully eliminated, he would have been long gone to go and garner demon lord Ramuru's support. Pitting the Rossos against a demon lord and profiting off the eventual cash. The fact that he was able to achieve this under everyone's nose shows that Damrata of gold was not just for show. On the other hand, Granbell was also a cunning man who already understood half of Damrata's intent. He was unlikely to interfere, but he couldn't know for sure whether Damrata would do business with Demon Lord Ramuru or not. Damrata was an upstanding merchant, though in the eyes of Granbell, the ruler and head of the Rosso, Damrata's attitude was unacceptable. When Damrata left, Granbell muttered under his breath, I detest you so much. You dared to exploit our failure. Once this matter is done, you're next. The humiliation in Granbell's eyes darkened into surging rage. Meanwhile, Damrata is in front of a young man and reported, and that was how things worked out with the five elders. The young man casually sitting on the chair replies, is that so? It's great that our tie with the Rosso is finally settled as you expected. Now we can continue to use them as a point of contact for negotiation. Although Damrata seemed arrogant in front of the Rosso, he appeared rather humble in front of the young man. But that was only natural, for this young man was Damrata's boss and commander-in-chief of the secret organization Cerberus. Damrata responds, I see. But curse those rats. Pushing a monster like that on me without even informing about it. And the young man laughed, ha ha ha, I guess our luck is down. But at least you were able to step back at the right time. And Damrata says, ha ha, indeed. How lucky. His name was Diablo, if I recall. He could rival, the primordial white, that rampages in the empire. It shows that demon lord Ramuru is not the only threat. They also both discussed that the speed at which demon lord Ramuru accumulated his strength is much faster than their own reorganization. And that demon lord Ramuru is incredibly lucky that he gathered a group of powerful magians under his reign. He even tamed the storm dragon Baldora. The young man said, honestly, it would be the worst option to confront that kind of power head-on. 
they both decided to take their time to think more and avoid rushing. Damrata says, this chaotic situation may last for quite a while, and we may suffer some losses from striking under such circumstances. Where the young man agreed, you have a point. I used Hinata to get back at them a little, but that sure didn't work out. It is best that we stay quiet for a while before we dig ourselves into a deeper hole. Suddenly, Damrata seemed to have recalled something and began to complain. By the way, the five elders were all bark and no bite. They promised to eliminate Hinata the saint and look how that ended up. With both surviving, I'm sure they'll work out their misunderstandings. There probably won't be any more misunderstandings between the Western Saints Church and Tempest Federation. Damrata said in quite the frustrated tone. To that, the young man replied with a wry smile, I thought that would happen, Ramuru is too generous to humankind and wouldn't want to kill Hinata. I was kind of hoping that generosity would spell his downfall sooner or later. But it appears that he's not as naive as I thought. Damrata also shares that the five elders were aiming to conspire with Ramuru so they could suppress the storm dragon. And Damrata was very grateful towards the young man who sensed a danger and informed him beforehand. If not, he would have encountered Hinata before she went to find demon lord Ramuru. The young man's priority who formed the secret organization Cerberus aimed to dominate. He wished to conquer the entire world. Damrata resonated with his ambition and greatly admired him. Even though he would laugh such a notion off under normal circumstances, Damrata had a hunch that the young man can make this a reality. That's why he didn't doubt the young man's order. The young man responded to Damrata frankly, my plans would have been wasted had I lost you as well. After hearing the young man's concern, Damrata assured him that, if ever it will happen, he will at least try to figure out a way to escape. Because one can't just become a leader of Cerberus with money alone. It takes real talent to make the powers that be in the underground to bow to you. Damrata says, then it is perhaps best for me to return to my motherland first. And the young man agrees, yeah probably. You said she didn't saw your face, but this is Hinata we're talking about. She's probably got her eyes on you. It will be more difficult for you to act in public, so it would be best for you to find yourself a replacement. With that being said. Damrata knew who the young man would mention, and it seems like he didn't like it, so the young man asks, let's not ask Vega to fill in for you, huh, and Damrata is convinced, very well. Then I shall ask Misha to replace me. Gold, woman, and power. Each leader had a title that symbolized a man's desire. Misha of woman had a personality one couldn't be careless with, but at least she could be communicated with. On the other hand, Vega of power could be a difficult one to deal with. Just like his title power symbolizes, he himself was also violence personified. Vega would completely ignore Damrata's order, he only listened to direct orders from the young man, who was well aware of this, which was why he didn't want Damrata to deal with such troubles. Damrata asked the young man, that sounds good, sir. So how should we wind down the slave trade I had been working on here? And the young man responded, the slave trade union always was a pain to deal with. Shut it down. I hate slavery anyway. And Damrata answers, hmm, I have no objection. But are we just going to release all the rare monsters we circulate around Misha's Echidna Club? And the young man said, no, it's business as usual for confidential merchandise. We still have a link to the Rosso family, so we might as well use it. Damrata said these words before he leaves, very well. Then, please leave the rest to me. Damrata left the location and the young man closed his eyes and delightfully played a game of chess in his mind. Then he heard tapping of footsteps. His lips curled into a smile as he spoke to the woman behind him, a secretary. He asked, did you catch all that, Kazarium? And Kazarium replied, loud and clear, boss. But why did you want to dismantle the slave trade union? This is Kazarium, a trusted confidant and advisor to the boy. The young man answers her question, it's simple. I wish to sell him a favor this time. And Kazarium asked again, is that the only reason? Where the young man explains, do I really need to say the other one? The whole of the Jura Great Forest is now under that slime's rule. If we go monster hunting there, we'd get crushed. 
If that's the case, wouldn't it be more beneficial for us to dissolve the shop early? Kazarium is now clarified, I see. That does seem to be the case. We just need to protect our cost assets, huh? Like a lizard that's lost its tail. And the young man asks, right? Can I entrust this task to you? Selling him a favor. Oh, him, you mean? You come up with the most interesting ideas sometimes, boss. I see how this is. Please leave it to me then. And the young man is assured, hmm, I'll be counting on you, Kazarium. Kazarium replies back, of course. And by the way, I hope you can call me Kigali from now on. The young man's eyes turned white at Kazarium after hearing his words and asked, oh. Have you finally made up your mind? And Kazarium answers, yeah. With Clayman dead, it's time to step up. Before I can take my revenge against Leon, the name Demon Lord Kazarium needs to be sealed up. Where the young man is amused and said, sure thing. Then, Kigali, this is quite the sudden request. But anyhow, I'll be entrusting you with the matter. Kazarium replied back, I've got it covered, boss. They gave a glance on each other and grinned, opening the curtain on a new age of chaos. And that's it for my video. Now, it's shout out time. Welcome to the new members of Voldora's Loyal Knights. Thank you Jeremy Guire. Thank you Tempest Hit. Thank you First Last. Thank you I'm Bored Senpai. Thank you Shazam. I also want to thank my beloved existing loyal knights. Next, I want to give a shout out to my Discord boosters. Thank you for boosting the server four times. Thank you for boosting the server twice. And thank you to the following for boosting the server. Thank you so much everyone. See you in my next upload.